Hello guys, welcome to a new episode of Dr. Jazz. So we are continuing our brachial plexus chapter, section number two. So we just finished our basic structure of brachial plexus. So today I am discussing some injuries or pathological things uh, in happening in brachial plexus. So let's just move to the brachial plexus injuries or paralysis. Boom. We just finished our brachial plexus section number A of basic brachial plexus. So we are continuing now from this chapter. What is mean by Erb's point? What is Erb's point? Actually, Erb's point is this is our Erb's point, the C5, C6 root and the upper trunk. This is our Erb's point. So this is our Epps point. Epps point is C5, C6 and the trunk is coming upper trunk and the anterior divisions also. So we are having a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 sections. I will explain which. <coughs> this is the first section, second section, third section, fourth section, fifth section and sixth section. So in Epps point we have six points. Something happened in this point it calls Epps paralysis. So something happened to C5, C6, this area we will call as Erb's paralysis. If Erb's paralysis happened, which nerve roots involved? Yes, yeah, so obviously it's C6 and C5. Why? Erb's point is in C5 and C6. So something happened to this area or this area. This is our Erb's point. So something happened in this area which root is involved C5 and C6. So Erb's paralysis the root involved is C5 and C6. You have to know that which nerves are affected in Erb's paralysis. So you can easily understand or you can easily recollect from these mnemonics like AMS. AMS are the nerves which are affected in Erb's paralysis. So, what is A is axillary nerve, M for musculocutaneous nerve and S for suprascapular nerve. So, A, M, S are the nerves which are affected in Erb's paralysis. So, in Erb's paralysis, the patient's hand or uh, patient's pos posture of the hands will be like in a particular pattern. So, I will give the picture now that how it will looks like. So, we will call some names or signs for that uh, posture. So what are the signs of this Erb's paralysis? So we are having three signs or three type of names we are mentioned for Erb's paralysis that are policeman tip hand, porter's tip hand or waiter's tip hand. These three signs you have to remember. These three signs are seen in Erb's paralysis. Here you can see the arm will be adductor medially rotated, elbow will be extended and forearm will be pronated and fingers are flexed. Next paralysis we are moving to Klumke's paralysis. So Klumke's paralysis the injury is mainly in lower trunk. I forgot to tell you one thing. In Erb's paralysis the injury will be affected in upper trunk injury where the upper trunk is C5 and C6 upper trunk. In clumpy paralysis it is lower trunk C8 and T1 the injury is happening here. So in clunky paralysis the injury will be in lower trunk of brachial plexus and of course you know that in lower trunk which roots are coming it's C8 and T1 C in lower trunk it's C8 and T1 and in Klumke's paralysis, which nerves are involved? The nerves are involved is um, U, M. U for ulnar nerve or M for medial nerve. Easy. Again, I am repeating. In Erb's palsy, the nerves are involving AMS. And in Klumke's paralysis, the nerves are involved um, U, M, ulnar nerve and medial nerve. Here, here also we have one sign which seen like same like Erb's palsy, we have uh, in Erb's palsy we are having three type of uh, names or signs like policeman tip hand, porter's tip hand, vertex hand. So same like that in Klumke's paralysis we are having a sign name as claw hand. Claw hand is a sign which seen in Klumke paralysis. I will show the picture now. So just remember that it is a 
hyper extension at metacarpophalangeal joint and flexion at interphalangeal joint this claw hand you can see this uh, in with picture you can coordinate with that picture it is hyper extension at metacarpophalangeal joint and flexion at interphalangeal joint this is claw hand see the hyper extension at metacarpophalangeal joint and flexion at interphalangeal joint in moving to the upper section like in from c5 c6 and c7 from the root of c5 c6 and c7 we are having a nerve is coming like it's very long you can see it's not very small from the c5 from the c6 from the c7 this brown line is coming it's very long that's why we are calling this like long thoracic nerve or nervo serratus anterior nervo serratus anterior also known as boxer's muscle and also this nerve called as nerve of bell this is very important that c5 c6 and c7 c5 c6 and c7 it's coming in low type of nerve that is long thoracic nerve also known as serratus anterior boxer's muscle or nerve of bell so any injuries affecting or any injuries happening this long thoracic nerve it called as winging of scapula so winging of scapula the injury to our long thoracic nerve don't forget it's a very important it's a picture based question also so winging of scapula is in it's caused because the injury happened in long thoracic nerve here you can see the medial border of scapula become prominent this is winging of scapula so we just finished the paralysis and winging of scapula and the basis of brachial plexus so this is very important you have to know every each and every single point from this chapter so we are concluding this section now so we will continue in next section so if you have any doubt just comment it and we will explain later and this is very important chapter so that's why uh, the sections will be very small so everyone learn read understand this brachial plexus it's very easy it's not a hard thing so hope you all like this video just like share and comment thank you